advocate Puneet Haseen here and welcome to you wanting to understand and gain some insight on the Digital Indian Data Protection Bill of 2023, uh, which very soon would be enacted into a proper legislation which would be enforced uh, in India. Also, obviously, applying to cross-border uh, processing of data. Uh, now, this series actually I came up with uh, having these short uh, videos about uh, the applicability of the Act, the nature of penalties, what are the duties and obligations of data processors, right of data subjects, in short, short videos to be able to make it uh, encapsulated in small uh, forms for uh, easy understanding in a simple language, which I hope all of you would be able to understand um, the implications and understanding of uh, this Act uh, as, as just a layman would. So definitely there's a lot of, uh, bus uh, you could say, hustle bustle about uh, the privacy law being enacted in India, something which was much awaited in India. Though under Article 21, right to life, right to privacy was always considered way back from the case of Madhukar Mandikar versus State of Maharashtra. But uh, how is it that this particular bill or this particular uh, law when enacted, what is going to change for individuals, for organizations? Uh, let's take an understanding of that, a short understanding of that. Uh, let's come to the first part, which is the applicability of the Act. Now, the applicability of this uh, legislation is for data, uh, data which is digital and non-digital. So what does that imply? That basically implies that if you are an organization uh, which is handling for business purposes or collecting data for any activity or an individual for commercial purposes doing this, it does not only, though the Act says Digital Indian Data Protection Bill, uh, though the bill says in Digital Indian Data Protection Bill and would become an act of the same name. However, it is actually covering a uh, digital data, which is data which is in the uh, digital format, but also physical data, which means whatever physical data that you have in your organization, it may not be data which is stored on a computer, it may not be data which is obtained in a digital format, which means your files, which means anything and everything in the physical format where you have collected data which is about an individual, it could be about an HUF, it could be about a company, a firm, all of which which is uh, uh, these uh, entities are taken within the definition of the word person. So when we are talking about data, we are talking about personal data, which means data about a particular person. Uh, now, the word person, as I just told you, en encompasses firm, HUF, individual, corporate entity, uh, any association of people, a trust. So uh, data pertaining to all of these, which is being processed by any organization or individual for commercial purposes is uh, covered under this act. So uh, when you're looking at whether the act is going to apply to you, irrespective of size of organization, so whether you are a small organization, a medium scale organization, a multinational organization, end of the day, if you're processing data and uh, that data is pertaining to the categories which are mentioned as person, and can identify the data is such that by viewing the data, it's identifiable that it belongs to a particular person. Person including, as I said, company, firm, uh, HUF, association, trust, etc., etc. So including all those categories, if it's identifiable, then in that situation, you have to be compliant with the Indian data protection law. So that is the first thing. Now, again, coming back to the point that it's not only referring to digital data, it is also referring to physical data. So if you are an organization or an individual dealing with physical data, then that does not mean just because the name of the act says Digital Indian Data Protection that uh, you are completely off the hook. You would still have to indulge in the compliance and ensure that your organization is complying with the act because you have physical data. So this is one of the major aspects about applicability of uh, this law because uh, one of the things, a large number of people, individuals, organizations, when, you know, the whole uh, uh, presentation of the bill in the Lok Sabha started, uh, started getting in touch with me that, you know, are we really uh, within the ambit of this? Do we need to comply? Should we worry? So if you are coming within any of these aspects, which I have discussed right now, then uh, yes, you need to comply. Uh, I don't say you need to worry, but I would definitely say that you need to take the next steps towards compliance. Because once the law is enacted, there's a certain timeline which is provided to you to comply with this. Now, the Act, uh, pretty much like the GDPR, does have a definition of uh, who is a data principal. So a data principal would mean any individual, individual organization whose data you are uh, processing. Processing itself is a very, very vast word and terminology. 
So by processing, you just don't mean digital processing. It also means physical processing. So not just automated processing, computerized processing. It is also referring to physical processing of data. It is referring to storage of data. It is referring to every single act that is performed on the data. So it's a very vast terminology, which again brings about, a, a, you could say, a different plethora of compliances for almost all organizations, because today everybody is dealing with data. Whether you are an organization which may not be from the IT space, but yes, you are handling data of other organizations, data of individuals. So uh, you could say in a way, um, everybody, everybody is coming within the ambit of the Indian data protection law. And uh, we need to work towards that compliance and um, ensure that you are uh, not falling into the uh, issue of uh, you know having penalties being imposed again one of the things a lot of people um, uh, got in touch asking uh, you know the kind of penalties 200 crores etc is that you know is that even real and does this even apply to us one of the major reasons for people having uh, uh, you could say a lot of apprehension about what is this law what is it because of the nature of penalties much more uh, than you know what uh, uh, the laws abroad uh, uh, pertaining to data privacy are encompassing. So yes, uh, the penalties in this act are really high. Uh, there's a separate authority which is there to deal with it. In the next uh, few sessions where I will be conducting, I will be sent mentioning it online, small capsules about, uh, you know, which uh, data uh, protection authority uh, is uh, going to be there in India, how it is going to work, uh, how exactly there will be a capsule which will be there online again uh, as a continuation in the series about how you can legitimately process data. How do you uh, go about um, handling data subject or data principle rights as an organization? What are the steps that you need to take? So in short capsules of 10, 10 minutes, uh, uh, there would be each of these subjects that would be touched upon. And yes, one of the most important aspects, concept of consent. Something which in India has never been, um, you could say, taken up by individuals also and by organizations also. So if we uh, try to blame them that, you know, they are processing data without consent as of now. Today, in India as individuals, we have also never really demanded consent. So I'll give you a simple example. Um, in India, the concept of consent was so non-existent or is also still so non-existent that we are open and okay to share data. That's one of the reasons why we are one of the major hotbeds for social media organizations wanting users out here, because we want to share data. A simple example being today, if you walk into a party in India, uh, people are open to talk about their family. You know, you can ask them, okay, where does your wife work? And the same thing, if you would uh, look at uh, some particular countries, like um, nations which have, uh, uh, you know, certain European nations, I will not name them. Wherein, if you would end up asking about the family, let's say, or about uh, where your wife works, it's taken as something highly offensive. That, you know, why are you trying to, in, uh, you could say, intrude into an individual's privacy? So in India right now, we don't have that concept or mindset of privacy. And uh, one of the key things that is going to be there is building this mindset of privacy at an individual level and an organizational level. So just to put it up in a nutshell, uh, this particular module, which was about the applicability of uh, the Indian data protection law, uh, applies to both digital and physical data, applies to all individuals uh, processing data for commercial purposes, all organizations processing other organizations' data, storing other organizations' data, doing uh, the entire plethora list of processing activities on other organizations, individuals' data, endpoint individual data. All of this comes within the ambit of this particular act. The processing can be physical about data processing, both digital both phys uh, and physical. So an organizations which may be small, medium, large, everybody coming within the ambit of uh, complying with the data protection law. Uh, one of the reasons also being the building of privacy within the country. So the applicability is uh, uh, to individuals, to organizations for both digital, physical data. And uh, the concept of data processing, which we will be seeing in the next module, which I will be sharing shortly. Uh, the applicability is also with respect to data, which uh, encompasses the definition of data breach. Uh, something very crucial, again, to touch upon that data breach, which doesn't only include unintentional data loss, unauthorized access, but also accidental data, 
uh, breach, accidental data, loss, destruction of data. So you cannot really plead that, you know, I was not having knowledge of the same or that somebody, um, you know, uh, um, you could say unauthorized accessed my systems that, uh, you know, it was absolutely accidental that the data was lost. So the concept of uh, intention per se does not seem to exist in this act. So one of the major things in criminal law that we have mens rea, which is you need to have a guilty mind. The Indian data protection law does not have the concept of a guilty mind. So you need to understand that as an organization, when you are looking at uh, this compliance, uh, the law is not going to see whether you had the intent uh, for, um, uh, you know, uh, the intent behind why a particular data breach occurred. It is going to be presumed that you are uh, having a guilty mind and even accidental data losses and breaches are going to be treated just as the same way that uh, um, you could say intentional data breaches would be treated. So with this, uh, I would uh, end this short capsule and we will again have the next uh, short capsule, which is going to be on uh, uh, the Indian uh, data protection uh, law, which primarily is going to be about the legitimate means of processing in India, how you can go about processing data. Do stay connected.